Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and this week we have an exciting topic for you, Yellowstone National Park, specifically safety in Yellowstone. We want you to go enjoy the park without getting killed. And before we get started, I should mention we're joined by a special celebrity guest, baby girl, the Chihuahua. Speaking of dangerous animals, <laughs> more on that later. So this video is really intended to help newcomers to Yellowstone because if you've never been to Yellowstone National Park before, you may be surprised. It's not like any other park you've ever been to, probably. There are a lot of ways to die in Yellowstone, and we're going to help you avoid them all. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of different types of environments in Yellowstone. Like, it's not all desert. It's not all geothermal. It's not all mountain ranges. It's kind of a little bit of everything. So there's a lot to think about when you are visiting Yellowstone in terms of safety. So in this video, we're going to rattle off seven important safety considerations when visiting Yellowstone National Park. Number one, of course, geothermal activity. We're talking about hot pots and geysers and hot springs and all those little areas throughout the park where you see steam coming up out of the ground and potentially boiling hot water. Yellowstone is not like a lot of parks, but it's so large there's no way they could possibly put up enough guardrails and safety rails throughout the park to prevent you from stepping out amongst those hot waters. So you are expected to exercise some personal responsibility, stay on the designated boardwalks in all of the different geyser viewing areas and really throughout the park because one wrong step in Yellowstone and you could find yourself knee deep in boiling water. Yeah, it may not be an injury that kills you, but it will definitely be a life-altering injury that will take you years and years and years to recover from. It's scary to think about, but it happens every year. In fact, the last two years we've been there, there's been someone horrifically burned while we were there visiting. A lot of times these people are very innocent. They're not purposefully going off the trail. One instance two years ago was a small toddler that ran away from the mom and fell into boiling water. And of course, the mom follows and pulls them out. And then last year, uh, a young woman chasing her dog who had escaped from their vehicle. So both of them very innocent mistakes, but life-altering mistakes that you know they'll be recovering from for years. And most people don't realize that a lot of the ground in Yellowstone can be very deceiving. It can look like solid earth. But what you don't realize is that it's only a few inches thick and beneath it is boiling hot water. So if you leave those boardwalks, you are risking falling through those two or three, four inch thickness crusts of earth into boiling water and you just have no idea that it's there. So that's why it's so important to stay on the boardwalk. Make sure your children understand how serious it is to stay on the boardwalk because you know, little kids, they're hard to contain and they're excited and they're running and they're jumping and they're skipping. And all it takes is a few steps off that boardwalk in the wrong spot and life would change forever as they know it. And we would hate for somebody to experience that. So honestly, if you have a toddler, having a way where you have a hold, a grip on your toddler, I think is very smart in these areas because it just takes a second. Yeah, if there's any place on earth where you would put a child on a leash, Yellowstone would be yeah. it. Like one of those little backpacks with a handle on it, you know, just so you have a way to have a hold of them you know, besides just a hand, because they can wriggle out of your hand if they really want to. And again, I think, you know, it could save their life. And speaking of leashes, you need to keep a tight rein on pets at all times. Before because, you open the car door. Exactly. Because there have been many cases over the years where a beloved pet mm -hmm. will run away from the family. Maybe it goes chasing a squirrel, whatever, and jumps into the hot water. Yeah. And first of all, obviously it's terrible for the pet. Secondly, sometimes family members will chase after the pet and try to retrieve the pet from the water. And people have lost their lives doing that. Yeah. And in fact, last year there was a young woman who 
her small dog. They were getting out of the car and the dog wriggled out and jumped out before she could get the leash on it and jumped in the hot water and she went after it and she was horrifically burned from the chest down. And of course, her poor little dog died. But it's one of those things where before you open the car door, make sure you have a leash on your pet. And for somebody that's never been to this area before, you don't realize how serious it is and how close it is to the parking lot. You know, it's not like you walk, you know, 500 feet before you get to some of those things. Sometimes they are two or three feet from the edge of the road or from the edge of the path. So it's really close by. And so that's why you have to really pay attention. Sorry, from boiling hot water, let's go to icy cold water. Believe it or not, you can die of hypothermia in Yellowstone. And in fact, I believe last year, a couple of people did just that in Lake Yellowstone, because you could be there in the middle of summer, July, August, and let's say you're kayaking or canoeing on a beautiful summer day out on the lake. If you fall out of your boat into the lake, you have a few minutes at most to get out of that water before hypothermia will kick in. Yeah, the water there is just insanely cold. That water is very deep and, you know, it freezes over in the wintertime. So just think about how cold it has to be for that huge lake to freeze over. You think it's a beautiful 80 degree day and it's sunny and, oh, let's stick our feet in the water or let's go for a kayak trip. And, oh, if you fall in, it's no big deal. But it really is. So it's just one of those things. We've never actually kayaked there, honestly, for this reason, because I think it's really for the the people who are, if they're not a pro, they need to be like a really serious, like experienced kayaker to be in that kind of situation. Yeah. I think last year, maybe it was a ranger. It was two died. retired yeah. rangers and um, they were reported missing and they found one of their bodies washed up on the shore. And I don't think they ever found the body of the second gentleman. So it's, it's really sad. And I'm sure they were super well-trained. I mean, they were retired park rangers. So it can happen to anybody. Don't think it can't happen to you. So I think that's part of going into some of these activities in Yellowstone is is not getting too full of yourself, you know? And along the lines of the cold water, also think about rushing water because there are some beautiful waterfalls in Yellowstone, but the water that's rushing along through the rivers, the Yellowstone River, for example, really moves with a lot of force And there have been situations where people have lost their balance when they get out into the water and they get swept downstream and drown. Now, there are parts of the park where, you know, fly fishing is allowed and it's more shallow and sort of easy moving water. So we're not saying that everywhere is a dangerous spot, but definitely check with rangers. And the other thing you have to realize, too, is there are parts of the park where hot boiling water pours into the river. So you could be in an area where hot boiling water is getting mixed in with that cold water and you get a rush of boiling water and it could burn you. So you could have both the the rushing water and the the boiling water mixed with the ice cold water. I mean, it's just kind of you a disaster. Simultaneously yeah. freeze and burn to death. <laughs> well, this is why they, for the most part, don't allow you to get in the water in the park. You know, they, they discourage swimming. Yeah, there are just a handful of locations where you can actually go swimming. And we have done that and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, But we've done videos about those places before. Next up, let's talk about the big star attraction of Yellowstone for many people, the animals. And everybody wants to go to Yellowstone to see the various animals. And let's take bison, for example. Bison you will find throughout the park. And they look like this friendly, docile. They look like a furry cow. Furry, fuzzy cow. And (laughs) that's why they're so dangerous, because they look so lethargic and just, you know, not. They look chill. They look mellow. Absolutely. (laughs) They injure more people every year than any other animal in the park. That's what we have been told. I mean, and I think it has something to do with. You can find bison throughout the park, and also people really underestimate their speed and their strength and what they can do. uh, Bison can gore a person just in an instant, and it could be a life-threatening injury if you're gored by a bison. They can also run up to 30 miles an hour. 30 miles an hour. Think about that. You're not going to outrun it. You're not going to outpedal it on a bicycle. (laughs) So take that to heart and don't approach a bison Usually when people are injured by bison, they are approaching it. They're trying to pet it, 
We heard from one lady who used to be a nurse in Jackson Hole. She had a patient who tried to turn a bison's head to get a better photo. And of course, Mr. Bison didn't like that very much and um, did something about it. So yeah, it's just be respectful of the wildlife. Keep your distance. They are wild. They're not animals in a zoo. In addition to bison, you're probably thinking about bear. Everybody that goes to Yellowstone for the first time is worried about the grizzly bears and also the black bears. In my experience, you don't really have to worry, especially if you're in the public areas. You want to give bear, if you see bear, a wide berth. Don't crowd the bear, obviously. Don't chase the bear. Don't surprise the bear if you can help it. Yeah. Where I think bear safety is more of a concern is on backcountry hikes Mm -hmm. because then you run the risk of potentially surprising a bear. And you you definitely do not want to surprise a grizzly bear. Yes, we have an entire video on bear safety, so I really encourage you to go watch that video. In it, we interview uh, Carrie Gunther, who is the bear biologist um, for that area of the country um, for the National Park Service, and he gives a lot of really great tips. But, you know, bears, for the most part, avoid people. They're not really interested in you. So if you are going on a backcountry hike, we do recommend that you carry bear spray. And you can find bear spray in pretty much all the local stores out there. Uh, You can purchase the bear spray, or if you prefer now, you can actually rent bear spray in Yellowstone National Park. Yeah. And we do recommend that each hiker have a can of bear spray, ideally, Yes, at the ready. Don't have it stuck in a bag somewhere. You've got to have it like on your hip, on the strap of your backpack, somewhere where you can reach it really quickly. Because usually if you approach a bear and you're going to have to use it, it's going to be seconds that you have to act, not, you know, a few minutes digging in your bag to find it. So in a future video, we're going to do some testing with bear spray that I think is going to be fun. So if you're new to Long Long Honeymoon, stick around for our future videos and we'll learn more about bear spray. Next up, I wanna briefly talk about heights because there are some areas of Yellowstone where there are beautiful vistas stretching off into the distance. And I'm thinking about, for example, Canyon. Canyon is one of the most beautiful canyons in North America. And it's very tempting to scramble out onto one of those rocky cliff edges to get that perfect photo of the canyon. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times we've been there and we see people climb over the little rock wall edge to get a few feet closer to get a better picture. And it's so incredibly dangerous to do that. So don't do that because there have been several deaths documented in Canyon, for example, where people have gone for the better photo, lost their balance, and fallen 1,500 feet down into the canyon. Yeah, and if you don't die, you're going to be stuck there for a while waiting on a rescue, and then you're going to be putting the lives of all the rescue people at risk because they are going to have to scramble down into this canyon to find you and pull you out. So it's just a bad situation all the way around. Avoid it at all costs. Next up, we're going to talk about hiking because every year it seems some people lose their lives on a hike gone wrong, typically by going on some backcountry hike and not bringing the appropriate supplies. You know, you need to bring plenty of water and food and preferably some way to communicate uh, with someone in case you get injured. You know, one thing that I think would help for a lot of people is leaving instructions behind in your vehicle, telling people where you went and what time you left. So just get a scrap of paper, write on there what trail you're hiking, how many people are in your party, what time you're leaving you know, your car to go do your hike, and just put that piece of paper in your windshield so that if a ranger comes by or something and they see that, or if, you know, you're reported missing by somebody, they have an idea of where to look for you and where to come find you. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people every year lose their lives in this way. They go on a hike, they don't tell anybody that they're going on the hike or where they're going. And they fall, they get injured. It's wild nature. You never know what's going to happen. You know, you could fall and twist an ankle, you could break a leg, all sorts of things. And something else you need to consider, Yellowstone has very vast temperature changes during the day. Like during the day, it can be 75 and sunny and beautiful. And at night, it can be 
you know, 29 degrees and freezing cold. So you have to prepare for both extremes. Yeah, to state the obvious, also check the weather forecast because there have been cases where hikers have been surprised by a sudden change in the weather, especially when the temperatures drop and they've dealt with hypothermia right. when they got lost and we're out there overnight. And that's another point. You might want to bring some sort of flashlight with you. Even though you're hiking in the middle of the day and it's sunny and beautiful, you never know when something's going to happen. You're going to fall and injure yourself or whatever, and it's going to get dark and you need a way to see your way around. A little flashlight, especially one with like a flashing beacon type of light on it. So if somebody's looking for you, they might have a better chance of finding you. Those sorts of things are small. They don't cost a lot of money and they can really make a difference if you're stuck injured on a trail somewhere. Next up, I want to mention cars and traffic. You know, Yellowstone has this one big figure eight road that winds its way throughout this gigantic park. If you're there during peak season, there's going to be a lot of traffic on that road. Mm -hmm. People will frequently stop to watch animals and people can get pretty excited when they see a bear, for example, for the first time and they'll dart back and forth across the road. So you need to watch for that. You also need to watch for large animals on the road okay. because there's a lot more than just vehicles <laughs> using the roads of Yellowstone. There are a lot of, for example, bison and even herds of bison. Yeah, they're no dummies. They're like, hey, there's this nice paved path here. We can just take this and get to where we need to go, you know? And they're on the roads during the day and at night. Yes. And Yellowstone is very dark. <laughs> At night, after sundown, if you're driving on the roads of Yellowstone, and you know it's pretty much the headlights of your vehicle are all the light that that's going to be on the highway. Yes, and there can be some really large bison using those roads at night. Even though full speed <laughs> in Yellowstone is forty to forty five miles per hour, it would still be potentially catastrophic. You know, because yeah. these bison are huge; they're dark brown, so they blend in with the surroundings at night. So it can be really dangerous. So if you're driving after dark, you really got to have your eyes open and really obey the speed limits. And especially when you're coming around curves, you know, a few years ago, we were driving and this car coming the opposite way was flashing their lights at us. And so we kind of slowed down, like, you know, were our headlights not on or what? what's the deal? And we were coming around a big curve and we saw this huge bison and it was just walking straight down the middle of the road right towards us. And that car really helped us because we slowed way down. Um, not that we were speeding, we were going the speed limit, but we slowed probably half of what we were doing. So we we're probably doing 20. And so it was a lot easier to react act to this huge bison being in the road versus doing 40 or 45. Finally, firearms. You know, it is legal to carry firearms in the national parks, but you really don't need a firearm in Yellowstone. It, you have the right to bring one, but, you know, the only time we have ever experienced death in Yellowstone on a firsthand basis was at Grant Village. Several years ago, we were camping and I was outside working on our trailer in the morning and I heard a gunshot in the middle of the morning. And then I heard some screaming and shouting. And my first thought was that maybe there was a bear on the loose roaming around in the campground. But no, what had happened is a young family had brought pistol, loaded gun, into the campground in a cooler. They were storing the weapon in an ice cooler, and a young toddler got her hands on the gun, and the parents didn't see it, and she shot herself. Yeah. So it's a terrible, tragic story, and she was actually the first gunshot death in Yellowstone in many, many years. But later, the father, he had said that he brought a gun into the park because he was worried about bears. Yeah. You don't have to worry about bears that much in Yellowstone. For one thing, you'll be lucky if you see a bear. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the most populated areas, I mean, frankly, the bears don't want to be around people for the most part. The only thing bears come into a campground for, for the most part, is if you leave food out. That's why it's so important to keep your food locked away in a hard-sided vehicle or in a bear box at your campsite because that way the bear can't get to it and isn't going to bother coming around. Other than that, we've never seen a bear in a campground in all the years we've been going to Yellowstone. 
In all the years Sean worked in Yellowstone, he never saw a bear in a campground. We know it does happen. We know that people do get attacked in campgrounds, but they're usually very remote campgrounds in very like non-populated areas where you know people are kind of in the bear's domain. Yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's exceedingly rare. You probably have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. <laughs> But my bottom line point is, look, I'm definitely a pro firearm guy. I'm a pro Second Amendment guy. If you are carrying a firearm, please make sure that it is safely secured, that children can't get their hands on it. And I will just add, you don't really need one to protect yourself from bears. Yeah. And, and I know that some of you will disagree with me. So if you do bring guns, please you know, keep them safe and secured. Yes, absolutely. And exercise best practices. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, on that somewhat somber note, yeah. we conclude this discussion of safety in Yellowstone. We thought we'd put this video out there just because over the years we hear these stories and maybe this will help newcomers to the park avoid some of these things happening to them. Yeah, because so many people that are going for the first time don't know a lot of these things. And so, you know, it's just helpful to have all the information, to be aware of what to expect, and to plan accordingly. One final issue, chihuahuas. If you see a deadly wild chihuahua, please give it a wide berth. Here, you want to hold her? Yeah, I guess so. Sean is her favorite person. You know, the chihuahua was known as the piranha of the Mexican desert. You want to come to me, baby girl? <clears throat> That's a no. You sure you want to come to me? <laughs> come on. And I feed her. You a fierce little pocket wolf is you what sure you, you are. You sure you want to come with me? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That was another episode of Long, Long Honeymoon, the long, longest-running honeymoon-themed RV show in the interwebs. Or so we claim. <laughs> We've been doing this a long, 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 long time. Long, long time. Yeah. So thanks for sticking with us all these years. We always appreciate it. Comment down below if you have a question that you would like for us to answer in a future video. We're always looking for fun questions to answer that are more uplifting than death in Yellowstone. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we don't need to be a downer today, but we just want people to be prepared so that they have a happy you know, memorable vacation for all the right reasons and, you know, know how to keep everybody safe and healthy and happy. On yeah. Day. I also don't want to come across as a nag or a Karen, you know, because <laughs> I don't or want to be Karen. like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> but the truth is, if you've never been to the park, you're super excited when you go in, yeah. you know, your adrenaline's pumping and you see a bear and you want to go run, chase the bear or you see a geyser and you want to sprint off the boardwalk and go to the geyser. Well, that happens every year and some people get horribly injured. Yeah. So the point of this video is to help avoid that happening yeah. to people. If, that, if, our, if this video can save one person from, from that experience, then it's totally worth it. <laughs> Sorry, right. if you're new to our channel, please subscribe. We've been cranking out videos like this for a long, long time, and we're going to keep doing so. And you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, for some more, like, I don't know, behind the scenes, unedited type of content, I guess. And until next time, what do we say? Lo, lo, ho. ho.